So what do these three pictures have in common? Well, they're all examples of chemical reactions. Fireworks exploding, rust, photosynthesis, all of these are chemical reactions. Now, what do we need to know about chemical reactions? Well, we couldn't live if it was not for chemical reactions. Our bodies are constantly churning out different chemical reactions. A chemical reaction occurs whenever a new substance is produced. And scientists have a, a specific way of thinking about this as far as the chemicals are being rearranged. So the bonds that might be holding some atoms together change and hold different atoms together. So the chemical bonds are either formed or they're broken. And scientists use a chemical equation to describe what's happening with the elements in a chemical reaction and we have a before and an after. We have the reactants, which are the elements and compounds that are there before, and we have the products, which are what are there after what is yielded by that chemical reaction. This example, we have hydrogen being burned and we have water being produced. So we have reactants and we have products. And this kind of looks like an equation, and that's what it is. It's a chemical equation. So if we see changes happening, how do we know that it's a chemical reaction or a chemical change instead of like a physical change? Well, there's four things that we can look for, and often they don't exist by themselves. We look for a couple of these at a time. One of these is bubbling. If we mix things together, and there's a reaction that then takes place, and there's bubbling, like if we put vinegar and baking soda, then that is evidence that there is a chemical reaction. If we mix things together and we get a reaction that makes things colder or makes it uh, heat up, that temperature change could be evidence that there is a chemical reaction. If we have two clear things and they react together, there might be a color change. Just like in the picture that you can see here which also is an example of a precipitate. So that is where we have two liquids that come together and we get a solid. Here are some pictures that we can look at and think about chemical reactions and evidence. We can see that there's zinc and acid on the left and we can see that there's bubbles coming off so we know that there is a chemical reaction there. And we're all familiar with ice packs where you have to break something and then shake it up and that gets those two chemicals to have contact with each other. And then when those chemicals have contact, then we have a chemical reaction. Now, how can the rate of chemical reactions be changed? Well, there are four main ways that we can change the rate of chemical reactions. And I'm mainly gonna talk about how to increase it, but you can also decrease the rate by doing the opposite. So if we increase the temperature, reaction rate will increase. And this makes sense because things are moving faster when things are hotter. So there's more collisions, there's more chemicals hitting each other in just the right way to get a reaction to occur. If we increase the surface area by taking a clump and grinding it down into powder, kind of like in this picture, that will also increase the reaction rate. Right? More of the surface is exposed to be able to react with the stuff that it's mixing with. We can also increase the concentration of what we're reacting. So there's more of it uh, per unit volume. So there's a lot more stuff there to actually react. And then we can also add a catalyst. And a catalyst is a special chemical that will just help the reaction go along without it being used itself. So it's kind of like a helper molecule, a helper compound to get that chemical reaction going. Now, in our chemical reaction, we have what we call the law of conservation of mass. All the chemicals, all the elements that are there at the beginning of the reaction are also there at the end. Matter is not created in the process or destroyed. All the same stuff is there at the beginning and at the end. And we can show this mathematically, but it's more important that we kind of have an intuitive sense. We just kind of know that uh, stuff just doesn't come from anywhere. It doesn't disappear, right? 
all those elements are there before and they're there at the end they just have been rearranged in a different order okay so that is chemical reactions chemical reactions just the rearrangement of elements from one order to being bonded in a different way